1994. I was a, had been a pastor in the small town of Afton, Iowa, down in southwest Iowa, and I've been the pastor there for a number of years. How many of you know where Afton, A-F-T-O, and Afton, Iowa is? Some of you know where that is? All right, I was a pastor down there. And uh, then, because I have uh, one, of, one, of the, uh, one of the degrees and certifications I have is, is for, uh, to be a public school teacher, and so the superintendent of schools was a friend of mine and a church member, and so um, uh, I, I did a new adventure for a while. I left the church, left the ministry process, and did ministry in the public school, the small school, um, East Union Community School. East Union, we are the East Union Eagles, and I was uh, um, an at-risk counselor, teacher, and also a coach, and I was reflecting on that this week about the wonderful experiences I had doing that all those years ago. Um, and uh, uh, in, in light of what we're talking about, about producing fruit, in light of that, that reality, that hard reality for some of us, that it matters what we do, that hard reality um, that, that even if we've never been to church or opened the Bible uh, or read anything that Jesus said, some of us know because we've been taught basic lessons like you get out of something what you put into it, right? I was thinking about all my, my the, the great experiences I had when I was coaching, and I coached uh, varsity sports. I coached football and girls basketball and baseball. And uh, um, I really, really miss, especially girls basketball and football. I miss that a lot. I don't miss coaching baseball so much because I love baseball above all sports, by the way. And um, I was always really disappointed because the young man that came to play baseball didn't know about baseball, and I spent more time being frustrated. Does that make sense to some of you? you know? So I focused on girls basketball and uh, football. And a couple of observations about that that goes in this vein of producing fruit. There were two things that I really did not like about coaching in a small school. East Union, the East Union Eagles, um, was a, it was a 1A, 1A school. Now, here, for example, to compare, in, in Dubuque, you have Hempstead and Senior that are 4A, okay? And if, even if you don't follow um, athletics and so forth, 4A means it's a big school. 1A means it's a small school. So one of the things, one of the things that was true about a small school is that if you were a kid in you know, 9th through 12th grade and you went out, if you showed up for the first day of practice, guess what? You got a uniform. <laughs> you know? Now, now, on the one hand, we, we sit in the church and say, well, that's nice, <laughs> right? That's nice. Everybody gets the uniform. We all get to participate. I would say this. That's nice in Little League. <laughs> little League. But, but in, in high school sports, there's supposed to be a different level, not just about win at all costs. Not that at all. But we're also there to teach, teach the kids something. Fair enough. Nate, you with me on that? You're coaching right now, right? Um, well, you're track. Are you coaching football and track? Okay. So you, you're with me, you know? So you show up, you get a uniform. I'll tell you why that bothered me. And here, here, here's it. Especially with girls basketball. Because whether, whether there was a girl that, that shot 150 free throws every single day of the summer, she got a uniform, right? In fact, I wanted her to have a uniform. <laughs> and then the girl that showed up and hadn't picked up a basketball all year and showed up on November 1st, 1st or November 5th, the first day of practice, hadn't picked up a basketball, she got a uniform. You see what I'm saying? And I, that, that always that always bugged me. But here's the thing: because I loved these kids, and, and still do. Some of, especially the, the um, some of the young women that play basketball um, for me and Coach Rogan when we coach, I still am in touch with weekly. You know, and I've done their weddings, and I think I've even baptized a few of their babies uh, through the years. So there was real love there. You know, um, but but here's the thing. They didn't put the time, effort, energy, and work into the basketball thing. And the reality was, sure, they got a uniform. But when they got into the game, they were embarrassed. Does that make sense? They didn't have the skills. They didn't have the confidence. They didn't know the game. And so here's, here's an important word I want you to hold on to today. It was not very fulfilling. Does that make sense? Think about that. It was not very fulfilling. Jessica, you were a volleyball player, right? Big volleyball player in high school. So you're with me on this, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you didn't practice, if you didn't work on your skills, if you didn't do those things, and you got out on the floor, and there's all those people in the stands, and they're, they're screaming, and they're yelling, and they want you to win. Because remember, it's, it's varsity sport. It's not Little League, right? We kind of make an agreement. We, we want to win, right? That was one of the things I did with the parents of my, uh, of my girls' basketball team, the first parent meeting. Because some of these parents had been my church members, I could get away with a lot. 
So we, we gathered at that first parent meeting, and I said, uh, Coach Roby and I said, you guys tell us, you parents tell us what you want. You have two choices. A, equal playing time. Is that, is that what you want? Every kid gets equal playing time. Or B, do you want to be competitive and win basketball games? You parents tell us before we even start the season. Well, guess what the parents all said? We want to win. It's like, good, because winning's fun, right? I mean, all you have to do is talk to any New York Yankees fan. Well, not this year. <laughs> <laughs> talk, to talk to a Wisconsin Badgers fan, right? Yeah. You know? Winning's fun. So the parents would say, we want to win. And we would always bring that up about midway through the season when I came to the second thing that I absolutely hated about being a coach. And that was when the parents would show up in, in our coach's office and want to complain about what? Playing time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how come Susan can't play? She comes to every practice. Well, she hasn't earned it. Fair enough? And we'd pull out this piece of paper and say, hey, you remember this vote we took <laughs> that you wanted to win? You remember that? Well, I know, but you know, she's on where she's a senior and she's this and she's that. And we would go back and forth on it. And, and again, the tough thing was I wanted to say to the parents, and sometimes I did, I wanted to say, do, do you realize what you're asking? Do you realize what you're teaching your kids? That, that, that you're entitled to something just because you show up. And is that really what you, what you want your kids to know in life? As opposed to you get out of something what you put into it, right? As opposed to you reap what you sow. As opposed to the lesson that we teach our kids, hopefully, that anything worth having is, is worth working for. And anything worth doing is worth what? Doing right? Those are good lessons, aren't they? Serve you for your whole life? That was always what was really disappointing, you know? In the real world, in the real world, you have to do more than show up. So I spring from the, the example of high school athletics and the lessons I've learned there. It made me think about this, again, this thing that Jesus is talking about. When it comes to the Christian faith, living the Christian lifestyle, it's more than just showing up. Okay? It's more than just putting your name uh, in, the, in the membership book of a church. It's more than just going through the motions. You know? It's more than that. It's much, much more. It's deeper than that. Think about it this way. If athletics isn't your thing, think of it this way. Uh, job. How many, how many people in a job would say to their employer, hey, wait a minute. I expect to get the full paycheck. I showed up all week. And the boss says, yeah, but you slept at your desk and did your nails. You didn't do anything. Is this real world? Fair enough. And the boss said, you're not getting paid. Fair enough, we get that. We say, oh, well, that makes sense. Or maybe in school, right? This picture was taken down at Hempstead, not senior. No, I'm just kidding. That's in your class, Nick. Yeah, okay. I got it off the internet. I got it off the internet. Same thing with students. You know, if a student came up and said, hey, I expect to get an honors scholarship and to get an A from this class, the teacher is, is, is going to say either, well, yeah, you did the test, you did the work, you wrote the papers, you read the books, you did everything. Of course you earned an A. Right? And that's, by the way, that little discrepancy with teachers. I'll put that plug in for all you teachers. When students say, you know, you gave me an A. What, what do we say to them? No, you earned it. Right? You earned your D. You earned a D. You got a D because you didn't work. Everybody gets that, right? Still with me? Basic, simple concept. Whether a sports team, working a job, earning a degree, whether it's, it's singing. It'd be like, like, you know, if I went to Bob Demery, who, who does the debut crowd? If I went to Bob Demery and said, Hey, Bob, I expect to have a solo with the Messiah this year. And I was like, Yeah, my wife's laughing because she knows I can't sing. <laughs> She's like, ah, That's pretty funny, huh? It's, it's ridiculous, is what it is. <laughs> One, I can't sing. Number two, I don't have time to go to the, the, the debut crowd practices. It's on Thursday night. I've got important things to do, like read and watch sports, right? <laughs> so, you know. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I think everybody gets it, whether a sports team, a job, earning a diploma, or something like that. Um, it, it takes sacrifice. It takes focus. It takes work. And you have to produce results. It doesn't mean you need to be perfect, but results. That's all Jesus is talking about when he talks about fruit. So you take that which, which you, you know and transfer it to this new idea. This idea that we are called as followers of Christ to produce fruit, visible results. Go back again, the girl who, produ who, who shoots up 150 free throws every single day. The fruit and the results are, so when the game's on the line, who do we 
want up there shooting free throws? The girl that does 150 a day or the girl that picked the basketball up the first of the season? You with me, right? Because probably the one that has done it is going to show fruit. And, and again, you can apply that on and on and on. Employees typically get, you know, they get raises, they get rewarded because they're producing, they're, they're doing something. Students get honor scholarships because of the fruit, because they said no to a lot of things. They sacrificed and studied and wrote and went the extra mile. You know, all this kind of stuff. By the way, a little aside, after Wednesday at 8 o'clock, it was amazing. I felt like I was back in coaching days because I still was approached by <laughs> I still was approached by my lovely church members who wanted to come up and argue with me about how their kids 30 years ago really should have been playing the coach was unfair. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and I'm like, are you talking to me about playing time? I'm not the, <laughs> I'm not the coach anymore and that was 30 years ago. But anyway, um, a lot of passion, a lot of energy around that. Hmm. Anyway, we get it. What I'm asking all of us to do is, is, is this. Take a step. When we talk about producing fruit, one of the important things that God is teaching us is that it's not about producing fruit because that's what's going to save your soul. No, 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 no. Stay li listen to me. It's not about earning your way to heaven. It's not about earning your way to God's grace. It's not about earning God's love because if it really came down to having to earn God's love, none of us would stay the chance. You all with me on that? It's not about that. It's about fulfillment. Fulfillment. It's about satisfaction. It's about fulfillment when we are producing good work, when we're producing deeds, fruit, whatever word is resonating with you. All of you in this room, you know, you really know, you've experienced in your life once or a hundred times or five hundred times, you know what it feels like to, to work hard and to sacrifice a little bit. And to, to finish something and have a real sense of fulfillment. Is everybody with me? Some of you aren't. You, raise your hand. You with me? You know what this means? Looking around. Some of you that don't want to participate, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's this idea of whether it's a remodeling project, whether it's your front yard, whether it's your getting your children graduated from high school, whatever it is. I think everybody in this room knows what it's like to have worked hard, to make, make the effort again and again, and the sacrifice, and, and when, you, when you complete that, when you produce fruit, there's an incredible sense of fulfillment and satisfaction of a job well done. If you're with me, just say yes. Yes. Yeah. Everybody you knows what that's like. So again, apply that to the Christian lifestyle. That is the simple message of the gospel. Apply that to how you understand being a Christian. Notice I'm not saying being a member. I'm not going there. I'm talk, just talking about claiming the name Christian. Apply everything you know, everything I've talked about up to this point. Apply it to the Christian lifestyle. We are called to be known by our love and by what we do, not just what we talk about. We are called to produce fruit and to know a sense of fulfillment, to know a sense of satisfaction because we are producing fruit. You know, this, this overriding right thing of changing the world, I keep going back to that, back to it, back to it, repetition to help us get this, you know? Producing fruit changes the world. Producing fruit, godly fruit, holy fruit, doing those things that Jesus did, actually doing those things changes the world. Now, one of the ways we've summed that up is loving God, loving others, and serving the world. That's a simple way to keep it 